In today's video, we're gonna be talking about 50 plus new things that you need to know about the Benefactor Terabyte before it is released in just a few short days this Tuesday in Grand Theft Auto Online. So we've got a lot to get to today, so let's not wasting more time and let's get it started. So let's start with some features about the truck. The first thing you're gonna need to know is that both the driver and the player have access to all their usual drive-by weapons in the truck cab. So if you wanna pull out a sticky bomb and throw it on the road, or whether you wanna pull out your AP pistol or mini SMG, you and your passenger will be able to do that while driving the truck cab. So you'll be able to defend yourself just a little bit. Number two, be careful with what you want in the truck as far as upgrading it goes, because you cannot renovate it to remove the turret station, drone station, weaponized workshop, or specialized workshop. So if you ever consider them a waste or not worth it uh, and didn't want them, uh, well, you're not gonna have the option to take them away. So if you buy any one of those things, you're stuck with the terabyte uh, forever. So just keep that in mind, be very careful on day one. Uh, number three, if the truck is ever put in an awkward position, upside down, stuck, can't be rolled back over, it will be relocated, if you can see my quotes right there, like the trailers for the gun running weapon sales. It respawns with the same health as before though, so you need to be careful. Regarding the player scanner, which is gonna be one of the new features of the Terabyte, if the driver of the Terabyte is in the truck cab on his own, he can actually use the player scanner while stopped or while in motion. And they can also switch cameras while stopped or while in motion. That means that the player scanner has a camera on the back and on the front as well that you can utilize and operate. Again, I'm not sure how effective this is going to be or if players are actually going to use the scanner, but you can have the option to use it on the front and the back apparently. However, if there is a passenger in the terabyte, the driver cannot use the player scanner as those controls are handed over to the passenger. You'll actually see a text on your screen that says you cannot use the player scanner while there is a passenger. So it's similar to other vehicles like the Buzzard where you can hand over the weaponized controls, except in this case, it does it automatically for you if there's a passenger. Moving on, the maximum range of the player scanner seems to be around 250 meters. So that does give you a pretty good distance to scan a player. Obviously, you won't be able to scan someone that's on Mount Chiliad if you're in the city, but you also won't have to be right up next to them. So you can be a little bit covert, a little bit stealthy, as stealthy as one can be in a vehicle as big and loud as the terabyte, but you have 250 meters to scan a player. Now, if the terabyte is active or out, like you, you have it and you're using it, the mobile operation center cannot be requested, neither can the Avenger. So I think that this confirms that this vehicle is supposed to be a direct competitor to the MOC and the Avenger, so you can only have one out at a time. The nerve center, which is the back part of the terabyte where everything goes on, uh, can only be accessed by players who are invited or who are in the same CEO organization or motorcycle club. So just like your nightclubs, you can set it to, you know, how you can have it invite only or same people in your CEO group. You know, random people aren't just gonna be able to walk up to your terabyte and go inside, which is obviously good news. Some fun facts, Lester's off the radar ability is usable from inside the nerve center amongst all his other services except for removing a wanted level. So if you wanna go off the radar while inside your terabyte, you still can while calling Lester. Lamar's mugger ability, strangely enough, is usable from inside the nerve center, adding another way a player can be temporarily disabled while you are safe. And you can actually watch what's going on with the drone which is pretty cool. Another cool feature of the Terabyte is you can actually lose your wanted level instantly just by being in the nerve center. Even if there's cops and helicopters right outside, all you have to do is walk up to your Terabyte, go inside, and you will lose cops, which is kind of cool. Now, just like the MOC, it's also possible to get busted uh, where the player actually wakes up at the local police station, just like in single player. So this is something that can happen in the mobile operation center. I think it's like a weird glitch that occurs because the cops physically can't get to you, but they're close enough where they would get to you if they could. 
it's really strange, but uh, just note that you're going to be able to uh, be busted inside the terabytes nerve center. What's pretty cool is you can use all of the terabytes features at once. So there can be a player driving while simultaneously using the player scanner, while another player is using the turret station and another is on the drone station all at once. So Rockstar does not limit you to using one of these at a time. You'll actually be able to use them as much as you want as long as you have the players to man them. Um, another thing about the nerve center, there is no radio active. So this really doesn't bother me all that much because I don't have the music all that loud, but just know that it's gonna be kind of quiet in the uh, nerve center as there won't be any music to keep you entertained. Let's talk about the terabyte client jobs really quickly. So I told you yesterday that there is six of them. So these first four, robbery in progress, data sweep, targeted data, uh, and diamond shopping, all of these are done with one person. Whereas collector's pieces and deal breaker, the final two, require two plus players. So four of them are solo, two of them require another player. Now after launching one of these new jobs, there is a 30 minute cooldown before you're able to launch the same job again. Now other jobs can be launched in that time, although there's a small cooldown of about five minutes. So you won't be able to repeat these missions back to back to back without really a 30 minute cooldown. Let's talk about some features of the drone. The flight speed is around 12 miles per hour. And during the boost, which you might not have known the drone has, it increases to around 30 miles per hour, which is kind of cool. Now the maximum horizontal range from the truck is around 500 meters. The disconnection warning starts around 450 meters and the maximum vertical range from the truck is around 200 meters. The disconnect uh, warning starts around 150 meters from directly above the truck. Now boost recharge for the drone is 15 seconds and only works really well moving forward. Now the shock recharge for the drone is 12 seconds. Now the stun gun part of the drone is really only for disabling a target briefly. It basically does no damage to the player, like one or two HP. However, the drone itself can take damage from a lot of different things. If you land it, if you fly it into another player, a vehicle or a building or being shot at, and if you don't move it, it will be destroyed. Now, the drone itself is not very powerful. Only a couple shots from an assault rifle will destroy it. It can be flown while the truck is being driven by another player, and it has a one minute cooldown regardless of what you do, whether it's destroyed, you exit the camera, etc. Now, another thing that's kind of cool is the drone station can be accessed while night vision or thermal vision is on with your player. And this will remain active while flying the drone. That, in my opinion, is really cool. You can have a night vision or a thermal vision drone based off of what you use when you sit down. Now, let's talk about the detonation part of the drone because I know this is going to be an interesting feature when using the detonation function, it'll actually detonate on the seventh second. And the detonation explosion range is less than three meters and will kill a max health rank 100 plus player with armor in one detonation. Now the detonation sequence does take a few seconds, but you can move the drone and boost while it's charging. However, you cannot use the detonation while the shock function is recharging. So you basically kind of have to choose one or the other. And to give you an idea of its power, it takes four drone detonations to destroy a rhino tank in Grand Theft Auto Online. So that shows you just how powerful this thing ultimately is. Now let's talk about the turret station, the multi-lock-on missile battery. So the turret station can be used while the truck is being driven by another player. That is great news. Uh, so you don't have to be stationary in order to use it. Now lock on range is interesting as it's basically infinite. After you've locked on to an aircraft, it will remain locked on regardless of the range as long as you keep the missile battery aiming in the aircraft's direction. Wow, that is powerful. So it's basically going to lock onto something and once it does, uh, it's basically up to you if you want to decide to let it go or not because it will lock on forever. Now what's also really cool is it has the ability to lock onto several targets at once. The max I've seen so far is seven, but that is a ton. I don't even know if there will ever be seven targets in the air, but it can, which is really awesome. However, even though there's seven targets in the air, only one missile can be fired at each selected target. 
So you can't have like eight missiles going at one different target. Uh, you've got to even them out basically. Now, if you fire one of the missiles without tracking, it'll take 1.5 seconds to reload. However, if you fire a missile with tracking, it will take five seconds to reload. And this cooldown seems to be regardless of whether you're just engaging in one target or seven, which is the maximum. And just like the drones, the turret station can be accessed with night vision or thermal vision. So if you access that, you'll actually get that in the turret camera as well. So anyways, that right there are some more features you need to know about the Benefactor Terabyte before it is added to Grand Theft Auto Online in just a few short days. It has a ton of features and a lot of things that are obviously going to be a lot of fun and very exciting for the game. I'm really excited about this vehicle. I think it is going to be a blast. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below as well. Let me know what you think about this vehicle and more. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new, you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.